what's up guys back with another twin motion tutorial i'm going to show you how to do an exterior rendering using twin motion let's get right into the video all right so i'm gonna give you a quick tour of our 3d scene and just kind of give you a little bit of a walkthrough on some of the things that i use to help bring some type of realism to our renderings and some techniques that I've used as well to help enhance my renderings. So as you can see, I did use Max Tree here for the landscaping. I also used spotlights and you can kind of see they're already set at the intensity about 200 and the color temperature and the shadows are enabled. So I also added decals here just to kind of give it um, some type of realistic look. So when you're dealing with renderings, a lot of times you want to add decals, you want to add uh, something to kind of give it that realistic look or realistic feel. Because a lot of times if you have a crisp, clean rendering, it starts to look a little cartoonish or doesn't look really authentic. All right, so I also added a floor decal here under the car and you can find that in the library you go to objects decals and you scroll down so you'll have different type of stains and i just use that to kind of represent that this car or other cars are here in this kind of driveway and just kind of insinuate that you know there may be an oil leak or anything to kind of give it some type of um, realistic feel okay so here as well just kind of pointing out some more things i do have um more of a landscape here and i did add some of our grass in our sculpting so i did scope out this area here and what i did was i went to shape and i went to raise and i also used dig and as well as smooth so just to kind of give you that that look for this retaining wall to kind of help out um, the look that I was looking for also I do have some sandstone boulders I believe I found that off of Quixel so those are just pointing out a few things just to kind of help shape uh, how I got this rendering to come together so all right so the first thing i want to do is create my image as you know you go to your plus sign here and i already created mine i called it day render you can go to these three dots here you can rename it if you like i'm gonna use day render for now all right so as you can see our rendering it doesn't look too appealing right now we don't have path tracer on but that's okay we're gonna Kind of go step by step on how i was able to use path tracer to get the results that i'm looking for guys don't forget to hit the like button for me subscribe and hit the notification bell as well and if you're interested in this 3d model it's a very detailed model go to renderreboot.com and you can check it out from there all right so let's look at our settings let's start playing around and figure out how can we get this rendering to look the way we want it to look all right, so right now we have our environment tab. Right now we have dynamic sky. I do wanna switch that to an HDRI. All right, so we have our HDRI and we look at our HDRI environment and we have it on sky dome. I wanna change that to backdrop. So as you can see, we have our backdrop and it's picking up on our preview from approaching storm. And this is by default. Approaching Storm is Twin Motion's default HDRI backdrop. And that's cool, but I want to use uh, a different HDRI. So we're going to click on our three dots. And you can go to the library. And Twin Motion has a different selection of HDRIs that we could use here. And I'll be honest with you, it's a pretty good. Um, selection but I'm not gonna use 
twin motions, HDRIs, which they're fine. It just all depends on the kind of look and feel that you're looking for. I actually have one in my user library and my local HDRIs, and I'm gonna use one 798hdriskies.com. All right, so we're going to just drag and drop onto our screen here. And that happened pretty quickly. So we have our, our updated HDR here and we're gonna start playing around with some of our settings. So right now our intensity is at 0 0.35. I wanna brighten up my scene just a little bit more. And what we're gonna do, so you can see the results as we going through the steps, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our path tracer here. We're gonna hit path tracer. So our path tracer is, is already on, but it's on a low quality. So we go to details. Let's crank up our path tracer to 1024. And let's look at our, let's look at our max bounces. Right now it's at six. Let's make it 30. And our fireflies by default is coming in really high. And that's just gonna control the visibility and exposure of the Firefly artifact. So let's, let's go ahead and bring it down to five. Okay, and then we want to check our denoiser just to remove image noise. Now this could be optional, just all depends um, what you're trying to achieve. So in this rendering, I'm gonna click on the denoiser to remove the image noise. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to environment tab and we're gonna make some more adjustments. So our intensity is one, at least it changed it back, change it back to 10. And our rotation is at 90 degrees. Right now, as you can see, we're rotating our backdrop. And a lot of times you kind of want to see the feel that you're looking for. Where do you want your shadows, your sun to hit? I want to do about 275. So you're starting to see where the shadows land. You're starting to see um, the sun as well, which is looking pretty good. All right, so let's go to our details. That looks fine to me. Okay, so I think we have everything for our environment tab. We may come back. Well, let's check out our camera view. All right, so right now in our camera view, we have exposure um, W beam, and then we have our auto exposure checked. We're gonna leave our auto exposure checked on, and right now we have our exposure at 0 0.50. I believe that looks fine. White balance, I wanna change my white balance. Right now, it's kind of a cool tone. I would like to actually make it a more of a warm tone. So let's see if we can boost it up to 6,900. And that looks pretty good. So we can put a 10 on it as well. Right now, that's at zero. Let's do 0 0.20. Click our local exposure. We're gonna leave that enabled. And our highlights is 0 0.50. Let's change that to 0 0.35. All right, and then we have our shadows. Let's enhance our shadows as well. All right, so as you can see, this area got a little darker, which, which is what I was looking for. I didn't want the area to look blown out. So as we increase our samples per pixel, it will actually start to look more clean and more crisp and give us the results that we're looking for. All right, so Let's go down to lens. Right now our lens is at 18. I actually want to be a little closer. So let's do 20. All right, we're gonna keep use focal length checked. And right here, I want to play around with my vignetting. So vignetting is gonna darken our corners, kind of hone in on our image, to kind of give it that cinematic look. And let's see if we can Let's see if we want to change our vignetting. Let's change it to 65. So as you can see, our corners got darker, which looks pretty good. Sharpness is at 50. I think that's way too sharp. We don't want our image to be too sharp. That's how you kind of 
get these images that look a little uh, too cartoonish or not as realistic so let's boost that down to let's bring it down to 35 percent all right we also want to check mark parallelism so now our image is starting to come together all right guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and uh don't forget to leave a comment as well if you have any comments have any questions um leave something down in the comment section all right so right now we're good there let's go to our composition overlays so we're gonna go to grid and as you can see you can kind of line up where you want your image to look and line up far as composition wise and my composition is already set so this is actually perfect the way I want it so we're, we're good there but just in case you wanted to change your composition you go to composition and you can turn on the grids you can actually add columns if you want to do that real quick you can add rows as well so if you're trying to focus more on your composition which is a great idea you know twin motion does offer that so all right so we're gonna click none for now all right let's go to render and right now I have it 1024 we can boost it up to 2048 just to kind of give us a um, stronger stronger image and let's see what else we got all right, so max bounce is 35. That looks good. Let's go to FX and let's make some changes here. And our color grading, we have contrast at 50%. I actually want to change my contrast at 55%. Saturation is at 50%. We're going to actually add more to our saturation. Kind of help bring out some of those colors and those textures as well. All right, so we have that. And I want to put a color gradient on this one. So we're going to go to our, our options here. And I use Vice 2. So you have different, different options here. Some of them look great. Not all of them look too good. So we're going to scroll down and find Vice 2. Let's see if we can find it. So there we go, that advice too, and that looks pretty good. All right, so, so in our image here, we can go ahead and crank it up to 4K, which we already have, which is great. And you go here to details, and we have an option called tile rendering. Now you don't need to use that unless you're going to uh, do a really big rendering and you need to export at a high resolution, which would be very useful. So. We don't need to do that but guys if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell and uh, we'll be back with another one